If you wouldn't mind, in French, could you say be happy, never content? Ok. Um, soyez heureux et non pas... Uh, what's content? Sorry, <laughs> 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 um, Just can't get the star. <laughs> I guess I don't know when I actually decided I wanted to become an artist. Since I moved to London a few years ago, I knew I wanted to be an illustrator. And then the more I worked and the more other artists and illustrators I met, I realized that actually there was something really interesting into going into the route of doing exhibitions, mm -hmm. uh, working on personal series, working on different products that I could make by myself. And so in the last couple of years, I've been trying to go more, to shift a bit towards more of the artist route and uh, and see what I can do with uh, with my personal work. We as a company, Woodbury House, are going to be working together in, yeah. in the new year. I want to talk about the, the ideas, the project, kind of how you're feeling about it, and just basically a general conversation around that sort of topic. Cool. Hi guys, welcome back to the Stephen Sully study. I'm here with Mimboso catching the footage, and I'm at Woodbury House with my next guest, Mary Lou. Thank you very much for coming on my podcast. My pleasure. Really, really appreciate it. So um, part of my podcast and part of my study yeah. is to find out why certain people have pursued the career they're pursuing, basically. Right. Um, this is a bit of a double-edged sword because one, I want to talk about like your journey uh, and your mindset and yeah. any kind of challenges that you've gone through and how to basically inspire the audience who are going to be listening to this. But then on the other side, we as a company, Woodbury House, are going to be working together in, yeah. in the new year. So I want to talk about the, the ideas, the project, uh, kind of how you're feeling about it, and just basically a general conversation around that sort of topic. Cool. So you're an artist. Yes. Um, I wouldn't normally ask this, and forgive me, but um, you're quite young. Right, well, thank you. Yeah, um, so like, how did you, like, how do you how know did at a young age what, because sometimes when I speak to artists, they're older yeah. and it's taken many, many years for them to decide that they're going to become an artist, but yeah. you're, 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 you're young. Yeah, um, well, I guess I don't know when I actually decided I wanted to become an artist. I was really, since I moved to London a few years ago, I knew I wanted to be an illustrator. Um, and then the more I worked and the more other artists and illustrators I met, I realized that actually there was something really interesting into going into the route of doing exhibitions, mm -hmm. uh, working on personal series, uh, working on different products that I could make by myself. And so, yeah, I guess in the last couple of years, I've been trying to go more, to shift a bit towards more of the artist route and, uh, and see what I can do with, uh, with my personal work. Okay. So, yeah, that's how I've, I've uh, arrived here. So just um, the, the natural thing is you've got an accent. Yeah. I, I, I know we've covered this already, but what, where, where are you from? So I'm French. Um, I'm from, part of my family's from Paris and then south of France. Um, but I moved to London when I was four. And I stayed to, in London from when I was four until I was 14 and then moved back to France and then back to the UK. So I've been a bit of a split between London and Paris um, my whole life. Uh, but the accent is staying. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so I always say this to, to, to artists, entrepreneurs, salespeople or athletes. Mm -hmm. um, I understand why you pursue these careers, but they're all very, very difficult. Yeah. And to break into the mainstream or to become commercial, kind of where the fame, the fortune is, yeah. it's very, very difficult. Mm. I know other crafts are difficult and I know other journeys and other professions are difficult, but yeah. I've got to say to be an artist is very, very difficult. So. Yeah. Was it something that um, you found came quite natural to you or, or you had to kind of really think about, you know what, I'm going to pursue this now? Um, I mean, I think I was lucky because I had both my parents um, who were really encouraging me from when I was quite young to really get into drawing and they saw that I was really passionate about it and they, they weren't the kind of parents who saw that as sort of a risk for them, their daughter to take to go into the art world. So they were really positive about it. And that, so it made the decision of going into art really easy for me because I felt like actually I was going to be able to do something good and I was going to, you know, be able to work and, and, and earn money and everything. So it is hard. It's a, it's a hard industry and there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of amazing artists out there. But I always try and, you know, keep in mind the fact that everyone's struggling. 
everyone's having their doubts. Uh, no one's just going through the whole journey thinking that they're amazing all the time. And speaking to artists a lot as well helps you sometimes realize that it's okay, everyone has their own struggle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it is, it's a hard industry, but it's also an amazing one. So it's, it's worth the, you know, the struggle and the, the doubts sometimes. And on the tone, tone of that, so uh, challenges, because part of the Stephen Sully study is I like mm-hmm. to talk, talk to people that have made a success of their self, but they've, they've had it slightly hard or they've come over challenges. Yeah. Any kind of ma- major challenges that you face and you've had to g- get over? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest ones are just when something doesn't follow through or when you reach out and, and you're not getting the response that you're, you're expecting or you're wanting from the people you're contacting. That's always hard because it's, I feel like it's just, it's so personal. I feel very close to my work. So if I'm showing my work or if I'm proposing something and, and I'm not getting the sort of positive response I'm looking for, it's kind of a personal, you know, uh, negative response to me. But um, again, I think you just need to stay focused and and realize that you're not going to be you're not going to be to everyone's taste, and you should just continue to do what you love. And that's how I get over all of these little struggles. That's good. <laughs> so talking about your art specifically and your style, yeah. Um, we're surrounded in Wood, Wood, Woodbury House, kind of it was that tonight, and it's predominantly street artists in here, yeah. normally on canvas, but we have worked with a few artists. Funny enough, a guy whose show it is tonight, Scooney Sculpture. Mm-hmm. Um, but predominantly, when you think about art, you think of canvases and stuff like that, but yeah. you're slightly different. If you were to describe your style, what, what's it, what is it like? Um, so I would describe it as very colourful, very vibrant, bold and contrasted, and very woman orientated and then the way I do my art is mainly digital but then I'm really I love to collaborate with people talented people who will bring my work sort of to life so whether it's a really good printer who will do manual printing and will really add vibrancy and depth and 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 glossiness to my work or working with a 3d designer to then transform my illustration into a 3d object and then a figurine and then maybe a massive sculpture um, so that's sort of how, uh, how my work goes from digital to then becoming more of a piece of art. Yeah. So why, um, how did you come up with your style? Because I know there's been a, I interviewed Nathan Bowen mm-hmm. um, Monday, yeah, Monday night. Yeah. And he said that he was the typical artist trying to make everything perfect for many years. And yeah. I think it was 2000 and I want to say seven, but I might have that wrong mm-hmm. or maybe even later where he d- decided to do scribble kind yeah. of drawings. And he said, life isn't perfect, so therefore my paintings sh- shouldn't be. And yeah. I quite, quite like that. Yeah, so yeah. Did, nice you, did you ever go through a transition of different styles? Uh, yeah, definitely. When I, um, when I moved to London and I started working in an agency, I had a very different style when I started. It was very black and white. It was very thin lines. It was very creepy characters. Um, and then when I, you was know, it like I realized drawings, it was like, like pen, yeah, it was pencil. pen and pen and, pep, okay. pen and paper, um, like very scribbled kind of Tim Burton, Tim Burton inspired style. Um, but then when I realized I wanted to go freelance and I wanted to really launch myself as an illustrator, <coughs> I realized that that style didn't actually reflect my personality at all. And I was actually quite a happy, you know, fun person that loved colors and and uh, and quirkiness and playfulness. And so. I realized that I, I had to just follow more of my character and put that into my work. And that's how I, you know, with time, ended up creating the style that I have now. Okay, and leaning on the, um, the female aspect of it, yeah. why is that so important to you? Again, I think it's not really something that I decided, but when <coughs> I was working on my new style, I knew I had to do a lot, of, a lot more work to have a portfolio up. And very naturally, I was just always drawing women and the female form and, curvy, independent, empowered women. And I think there was just a bit of myself in, in, in all of my characters. And I just feel strongly about the fact that you should feel good about yourself and you should be, feel good in your body and be confident. And that, that kind of attitude will really help you get what you want in life. So it was sort of a natural thing that I'm just inspired by and I just can't stop drawing it. So. And, and would you say if you were to give a bit of advice to any artist, we're like starting. It's really, really important to get inspired by something in order to, to create good, authentic work. 
I think it's good to have um, to understand what kind of message you want to give through your work. Like and a narrative. Yeah, a narrative, uh, a la just a guideline of something that you're trying to do with your with your illustration through your illustrations, and that really helps to have a base of what you do, and it helps your audience to understand as well what you're trying to say. I think it's yeah, it's a good way to to create a style to start with. But so how come you? Because uh, again, I'm now I'm going to pull you back to what I kind of said earlier, but. How come you didn't t typically go like canvas, for example, and start painting? Yeah. What? Why the figurines? Like, is it because you can show off the curves of the women a bit more? And yeah, I just I felt like there was going to be a good transition between two D and three D because my characters were so round and curvy and you know ready to pop. I felt like, well, this in three D must work because they're already quite uh, curvy to start with, even on a flat surface. Um, and so when I started collaborating with a 3D designer and he started doing some renders, I was like, okay, yeah, this, this works really well. And it made me want to continue down mm. that road a bit. The, uh, the w woman figure, I know there's a couple of versions of it, yeah. but they're sort of like on, on her side. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's like a white, like yeah. a bulb white, yeah. or can you call it bulb white, but like it's really like predominant. Mm -hmm. And then you've got like a fluorescent pink almost. Yeah. Um, What's the, the name of those and do they come in different shapes and sizes and how much are they if we're someone's a boy to buy it? Yeah, uh, so they're called Daydream um, and they're just pink and white and uh, they're about 15 centimeter tall. They're made out of resin uh, by a company in Ascot called Atom and then they airbrush paint it and then they put a gloss finish to them. Um, I've actually sold out the first batch uh, but I'm doing a second batch in January, February, and the white one is 385 pounds and the pink one is 485. And how are they going for you at the moment? Yeah, really well. I'm very happily surprised to see that people are actually <laughs> buying them. Yeah. Because it's it's the first first time for me, it's the first experience <coughs> and I have no idea if people would be into the objects, um, but it's really nice to see that it, it worked really nicely and the, the response was really positive. It's good. Which is always good. Have you got into any serious collectors or any like celebrities or anyone that is quite influential has collected your work? Um, so actually I started by doing a first, uh, two one-off figurines that were taller from another model for a first show I did called Nobody's Baby. Um, and uh, an illustrator that I absolutely love, who was one of the first illustrators I discovered in London, <coughs> uh, called Malika Fav, bought the the coloured one, and that really that's the only reason I did the the new figurines, and I went for another batch because I was like, okay, well, if she, you know, if she likes it, if she appreciates it, and I value her opinion as yeah. a really successful artist, then I was like, well, I should go for another one. Then it just makes sense to to, yeah. to roll it out. It a was bit just more. like a good push to to go for it. Um, and you also do screen prints? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't do it myself, but I work with a, a screen printer <coughs> um, called Make Ready. They're really, really cool. And uh, they can basically do anything. They're always saying when I come in that they can have like sparkles and diamond dust and, and, and whatever I feel really. They can screen print on any kind of material. And they're really cool. And I, I like working with them because I feel like they really respect the artwork and they really, really work and communicate with you to, to have the best results for, for your work. That's so good. It's really cool, yeah. So I know we're about to do a show in the next few months, yes. which we're really excited about, Same. and we'll come on, to, come on to that in a minute. Have you done any other big shows or anywhere, anything else around the world, or is it just, have you kept it quite small and niche? I've kept it quite small. Um, I so I did my first solo show uh, in London and Paris. It was the same series that was exhi exhibited in two different galleries, but that was my first and only one so far. Okay. So very excited your, to uh, do. So just put all all done on your own. Yeah, all yeah. done on my own. All uh, your own, own investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it was a bit scary, but it was it was really nice. And again, I was very um, very happy with the response and <coughs> people coming by and being really encouraging it's it's always nice to to see to see people appreciate your work yeah so like i'm going to i'm going to take it off the slightly work for a second talk yeah. about like the the business side of things mm -hmm. i know um you've done your first show you do it seems like you're doing lots of stuff on your own which is, is quite typical when someone goes into a career for the first time yeah. but how do you have like one hat which is this artist mm -hmm. another hat which is like your own accountant 
another hat which is like planning and goals and strategizing yeah. <laughs> another hat which is like marketing and, and advertisement how, how do you how do you how do you balance all that yeah it's uh, it's not <laughs> i didn't actually realize that was going to happen when i went freelance you know, I didn't. I mean, I understood what I was going into, but getting into. But actually, there there are really loads of different aspects of my work now. Um, I actually enjoy all of it. I like, uh, you know, marketing my work. I like to uh, be in touch with my clients and uh, and and stuff like that. But now I have um, I have an agent in the UK and I have an agent in France. So they nice. really help in terms of finding clients, you know, uh, taking care of the whole sort of management and then I can focus on the creative aspect because then it does take a lot off my plate Yeah, because it can take quite a lot of time. Because I've seen uh, there's uh, someone who we know quite quite well who runs a clothing company mm -hmm. and not that we've had this conversation before but sometimes I get the feeling where he's doing so much and he's being this entrepreneur and yeah. he's, you know, it's his baby, you know, and he's really wants to take control, which I totally get, and he's mm -hmm. passionate. Yeah. But sometimes when you're over-passionate and you don't let go, it's quite hard for the ideas to flow because yeah. you're quite stiff. Yeah, a bit stuck, yeah. What, what, did you ever get that sometimes? Yeah, um, I think sometimes it can be a little <coughs> bit overwhelming when there's different, just different projects going on and, and I have to sort of switch from one project to another, to a personal project, to an exhibition, and you know, you, you're so, I get really into the projects that I work into, so sometimes it's a bit hard to snap out of it and to just s straight away switch to something else. So I try to make it that I'll I'll prioritize working on a certain project for a week and then have a break and then work on something completely different instead of in one day switching from one project to the other. And I feel like that helps with focusing, being more focused on each project and not getting stuck. Yeah, <coughs> and it, do you ever have like brainstorming sessions where you think, right, I'm going to come up with a new concept or something that's going to um, influence me or a message I want to purport to the world? Is is there something that like like a strategy that you go through? Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I like to work by series, so especially for personal work. Uh, so if I know that I have a couple of exhibitions uh, that are happening during that year or that I'm doing a talk or I'm doing something where I'd like to show some work in particular, then I'll work on, I'll sort of give myself a brief of a theme and then take it from there and sort of think of, of, of something that's going to be linked by the same ideas. Um, and most of the time they're inspired by the title of a song or something that I'll, I'll have noticed. Cool. So yeah, it's good. It works pretty well. Um, as I mentioned to you off camera, I, um, I, I box, um, yeah. I've had a few fights and I haven't fought for six years mm. up until October that just went. Oh, that was and scary. <laughs> it was, you know, because I was fighting a 25 year old who was quite active, bigger than me, probably stronger than me, mm -hmm. heavier than me. But I just thought to myself, I've got to get back in there just yeah. to challenge myself. But how I made it a bit more that gave me a bit more purpose mm -hmm. is I put a charitable aspect to it, which yeah. is I, I was going to ra I raised money for my old uh, boxing club, which is also a youth club. Okay. So I thought if I keep myself accountable mm -hmm. and say I have to do this to, yeah. to, to give the kids money for whatever they need it yeah. for, it's going to give me that drive. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it really, really worked. Yeah. And I, I went out there and, and, and- Did you win? And I, went, I won, yeah. And I didn't, well didn't really get hurt, <laughs> which is cool. Yeah. Do, you, do you have anything like that, like char charities that you that, that work yeah. coincide with? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I actually, I, I work with Women's Aid. I give 10% uh, of my profit from my shop to Women's Aid. Do you? What, yeah. online shop? Online shop, yeah. And I love to, get involved in projects that are supporting charities or um, non-profit organization. I find it very, very interesting. And I also find that it's a nice way um, to use your work. And since people are, some people are seeing my work and they're following me and they're <coughs> sort of paying attention to what I'm saying, I feel like there's a bit of a responsibility to then focus some of my work to giving a positive message or yeah. encouraging charities or any sort of organization that are trying to do something positive. Yeah. So something I feel quite strongly about. Yeah, that's good. Really yeah. good. Um, I know what I'm about to say now is sometimes a little bit delicate with people in art or artists, mm -hmm. but there's a couple of aspects to art. There's people that collect art, 
there's mm-hmm. people that just use it as a decoration or to you know put it in their home or their office yeah. but then you've got people that trade up mm-hmm. and that's what we know notice you know like the investment side yeah i know it's quite early on in your career but let's say five years from now ten mm-hmm. years from now how do you visualize your market going i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly i i because I guess I noticed that a bit more when I went into producing the figurines that people were interested in, you know, the, the fact that it was an addition, that... Um, it's exclusive. That, that it's exclusive, and in a way, maybe they were actually buying it as a sort of investment. Uh, but I have to say, it's not something <laughs> that I've thought of at all, and I have no idea what it's going to be like in five years' time. I'm hoping that it would have been a good investment if anyone bought one, but... Um, I guess we'll have to see. If I were to say then, uh, if you were to say in a in an ideal world, mm-hmm. or as a as a goal, or as a vision, right. if you were to say like you know in in five years or ten years time, yeah. how would you in ideally like your market to go? Well, I mean, obviously, I'd I'd love for people to show more and more interest in in the work that I do, and uh, I I'm just really into the idea of doing more shows and trying to produce different type, type of artwork and investing a bit more of my time into doing that. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, I guess have the time and possibility to focus on that a bit more. Yeah, that's And good. then also have a giant figurine somewhere. And the last question around this, around this sort of uh, conversation, yeah. if you were to walk into Philips, yeah. Christie's, Sotheby's, and one day you're sitting there, yeah. and a Mary Lou figurine comes out, yeah. and they start the bidding. <laughs> and he gets to 50, 100, <laughs> 200, 300, 400, 500,000 yeah. and the hammer goes down at a million. Mm. How would that make you feel? Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. I mean, fair enough. Like it would yeah. be, uh, it's amazing for me because it gives value to my work and it's amazing for the person who yeah. would have made investments early on and, and ended up with a uh, good amount of money. So. I like to ask the artists that because some artists are really against you know whole, the whole money side of things mm. and I get that yeah. you know it should be about the creativity and the passion yeah. and then there's other people you know like the Jeff Coonses the Damien mm-hmm. Hurst which clearly like you know like to do stuff for the money as well yeah. and I just like to see the, the, the mixed responses because yeah. I usually get some kind of like response at the artist yeah. and um, I, I, mean, just, I just think if it's meant to be it's meant to be that's the thing it doesn't it doesn't really bother me if people then want to <coughs> blow up the prices be, for, for some reason or another then you know it's sort of out of my control anyway so yeah it's kind of like, like it'd be just interesting to see have you got any visions to do more stuff abroad like uh, different, like different, like you mentioned, like a family mem- member lives in Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, my sister lives in Hong Kong, and they got a little daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mainly, yeah. yeah, lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I would love to have the opportunity to work uh, abroad to do some some shows or or collaborate with galleries in, you know, in Hong Kong, in in Japan, in New York. Like it'd be be something that I would that I would love to do as well. That's Make good. me travel a bit more. So yeah. Um, which artists inspire you? Uh, so many. Uh, I love painters like Matisse, David Ockney, Picasso. I love illustrators like Malika Fav, like Para. Um, photographers like Helmut Newton, uh, like Man Ray. Love Man Ray. And then also just loads and loads of artists that I follow on Instagram. People that I, whose work I see in the streets in London. I feel like there's just a huge amount of talented people yeah. that are really inspiring and have you got any like mentors i know you've got your agents mm-hmm. but have you got any uh, mentors or any kind of teachers or have you had a background where you've actually gone to that college where they've taught you a certain kind of style uh f- my school was a bit it was it was it was good in s- some aspect but it was also in some ways a little bit uninspiring because i felt like the the teachers some of the teachers who were teaching us weren't actually that passionate or maybe, I don't know, weren't that into what they had done. And uh, so for me, the, it was way more the artists that I met in London when I moved that were way more inspiring because, uh, because I felt like I could have a chat with them and they had achieved so much and, and I felt like their journey was way more interesting. Um, so again, artists like Marika Fav has done incredibly brilliantly with her work and how she how she uh, set up her whole career. So she's, uh, she's a massive inspiration. But yeah, loads, loads more as well. Do you collect art yourself? No, but it's something that I'd like to get into. 
I mean, I've bought a few figurines uh, and, uh, and some prints, but mm -hmm. I'd like to get into more like edition pieces. So. If you were if you were given yeah hundred thousand mm -hmm. pounds yeah, and I said you had to go and only use this money to collect art, who would you collect? That's hard. What can I buy for a hundred thousand? I don't know the market. Would, would, would you would you get one big piece or multiple small I th ones? I think uh, I think I would go for multiple ones and sort of see which ones diversify. Which ones do well, yeah, diversify. But Smart move. Yeah, I'd have to have a think <laughs> of who I would buy though. Um, so our project Woodbury House with yourself. Yes. Um, we got to know each other through Katie Erie. Yeah. Shout out to her. Um, she came on my podcast as well and spoke yeah, about so her story, which was fantastic. Cool, and yeah. I'm hoping to get another podcast with me, you, and her, yeah. talking good. about our, you know, uh, what's going to be Our happening project, yeah. and the project and mm -hmm. the collection and stuff. So uh, we're going to be doing an event at Nietzsche, yeah. which is a clothes store over in East London. Yeah. Um, it's not too far away from where you live. No, it's literally 15 minutes yeah. away. So yes, yeah, cool handy, store. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a bit more about that project then. Um, yeah. I know you, you two have been speaking a bit more about it than us. So yeah. what, what, what kind of things can you r reveal? Well, um, so it's gonna be, there's going to be a show with an event, event night. Um, and we're basically going to use the space to showcase a new series that I've been working on called Daydream. Um, and there's going to be, you know, massive <coughs> prints. There's going to be maybe murals uh, and uh, some another uh, set of figurines as well. Yeah. Um, some of the daydream figurines. And uh, yeah, we're also talking about doing some silky pajamas and uh, loads of other products. So it should be really, really fun. That's good. And I'm going to go check out the space tomorrow. So it's going to be good. Well, the audience can uh, definitely find the updates on that on Woodbury House Art or Woodbury House's uh, website or even my own. Um, but where can people find you? Um, so I have an Instagram, at Maridufour, and uh, from that you can have access to my website as well. Uh, but most of my work is on Instagram. So We're going to be updating, no doubt, uh, on yours, mine, and whoever, yeah. and, and the companies, uh, the, the, the progress. Definitely. Um, any bits of advice you, you would give to any, like anyone getting into business for the first time, specifically art, or someone who wants to express itself? Um. I think it's always hard at the beginning. It's not a myth. I think when I knew from when I started working for myself that the first two years were going to be a little bit unstable. But um, I think the biggest thing to get over is uh, doubts and uh, I guess feeling a little bit like you're not doing exactly what you want. But as long as you're proud of what you're doing, proud of your work, uh, I think it's that's the the biggest thing and the most important thing to to keep going is to be happy with what you're producing and then that will lead you to to work on different projects and and collaborate with people yeah that's a good point because it can be quite easy i guess in fashion mm. in music and in what you do with art that you can find yourself sometimes doing art music or fashion mm. that just suits an audience to get paid yeah because everyone needs to get paid because yeah. otherwise you can't live yeah exactly but at the same time that might take you off of how mm. the truth behind yeah. what you're trying to do yeah. so how do you balance that um at the beginning you know i had to do work that i wasn't particularly loving but you know i had to pay my bills and i was starting off and it was all very scary but i was always making sure that what i was showing wasn't was only the things that i liked and the things that i wanted to work on and also i found that with clients and with people that i work with you know, if as long if you don't show them what you want to do, then they'll keep asking you to do stuff that you don't yeah. want to do. And so, if you want to get into doing loads of woman character, just do woman characters, and then people will hire you to do that. Or if you want to start doing murals, just like Kiliana said, do murals. Or if you want to start doing figurines, then collaborate with someone and find a way to make a figurine, and then people will see it and understand that that's what you're selling, and mm. they'll they'll you know there'll be some people interested in. Yeah, that's a good lesson actually, because it's almost like whatever you want to get back from the world you need to put put out in the first place yeah exactly so you've noticed every time that you wanted to do something more of the figurine for example yeah. you would do more of that yeah completely yeah. it's if i push something enough then that's what i'll get contacted for so it's it's hard because sometimes you can get distracted and sometimes you'll take a project because it's good money and things like that but just remember to to show what you actually want to be doing because otherwise you'll keep doing the stuff that 
that you're you're presenting to your audience. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, um, I leave my podcast always with my catchphrase, which okay. is "Be happy, never content." Okay. I've got my own Very reason. Nice. I, yeah. I came up with the reason uh, many years ago because I run sales companies. Mm -hmm. um, if I was to ask you yeah. to explain to the audience what "be happy, never content" means to you. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess uh, don't just settle for uh, sort of not normal, but not average either, but kind of like, well, I guess content is a good way, but just always aspire to do more. And I don't know, I think to be truly happy, you need to, you need to, uh, ex uh, accept, how do you say, exceed, excel yourself? No, that's, that's not the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and push the boundaries. Yeah, push push the boundaries and and try and make uh, make something more out of what you love. And yeah. I think that's a good way to 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 find happiness and to be motivated as well. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, podcast is coming out in um, I think two weeks after Christmas, literally okay. day. So yeah. it'll be on, out on the Wednesday. Great. So everyone look forward to it. I normally round off the podcast by saying goodbye and be happy, never content. But <laughs> If you wouldn't mind, in French, could you say be happy, never content? Okay. Um, soyez heureux et non pas... Uh, what's content? Sorry, <laughs> <Actually. that's> <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been away from France too long. Um, just can't get the staff. <laughs> can't get the staff. <laughs> Can we just leave it there? Uh, we'll leave it there, okay? Be happy, never content. Thank you very much and thank you for coming on. Thank you. Absolute Cheers. pleasure. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. So I put it on you there. <laughs> oh no, it's bad. It's me. <laughs>